Sunlight streamed in through the open window, illuminating stray particles of dust as they danced through the air. The gilt, gilt, gilt edge mirror on Emmeline's wall shimmered, the surface sparkling like the edge of a cut jewel. Emmeline lay on her bed, stretched out on her stomach, cat-like, kicking her legs idly back and forth in the air. Cornelia sat beside her, arms round her legs, knees under her chest, taking up rather, <laughs> rather less space than Emmeline was. Cornelia was attempting to read a book, but... Emily kept tutting and sighing and making such a fuss, Cornelia could not help but be distracted. <laughs> In the same outfits, goddammit! It's like they wore nothing else. What are you doing, Emmy? Oh, I'm supposed to be reading this. She gestured to a thick volume of poetry lying on the bed before her, hefty enough to knock a man's teeth out. But it's so tediously, unspeakably dull. I fear I will go quite mad. Did Miss Warren tell you to read that? You mean Ellie? You still call her Ellie? I can call her what I please. She is under the employment of my father, and she should accept whatever name I see fit to give her. You, my dear Emmeline, are quite a piece of work. I feel terribly sorry for Miss Warren. Do not feel sorry for her. I feel sorry for me. I mean, I am the one who has been tasked to read this drivel. Though it is so boring, I would rather drive a rusty spike through my head. Cornelia shifted slightly on the bed, squeamish, and held one hand to her chest. Cornelia's complexion was always pale, yet it looked paler now like a cadaver's. Must you be so gruesome? I cannot help myself. The Gothic is so much... In <laughs> I cannot help myself. The Gothic is very much in vogue right now. I believe that was back in the late 1790s. You're half a century too late to engage in this particular fashion trend, Emmy. Well, I wish I was reading Radcliffe instead of this nonsense. Why should I care about a leech gatherer of all people? The very notion that people are so poor they must gather leeches to make a living is depressing enough without reflecting upon it in an inverse form. Ah, uh, Woodsworth is it? Woods, Woodsworth indeed. He uses rather too many words. I cannot understand why, Ellie. Nay, why all of England is so besotted with him. I wandered lonely as a cloud indeed. I do not understand why you dislike him so. I thought you liked poetry. I do like poetry, but this is not the sort of poetry I like. Could you not try and focus on the elements of his poetry you enjoy rather than lingering on those which you despise? There is nothing about his poetry I enjoy, Nelly. I can't stand all the moralizing about poor people. I wonder how often our genial friend Mr. Woodsworth mingled with leech gatherers and country pastors. Ha! Huh. Emmeline snorted in a manner that was not entirely dissimilar to a horse and slammed her collected works of William Woodsworth shut. She slammed it with such force she nearly sliced her fingers off and was only able to withdraw her vulnerable digits at the very last second. I cannot be doing with all this nonsense, not on such a lovely day. I would much rather experience nature with my own senses than read it with such with these dusty pages written in a dusty old man by a dusty old man. But what is Miss Warren? She will scold you if you do not finish your reading. Why should I care what an old spinster thinks? She th she likes William Woodsworth. <laughs> you cunt. A, a lot of people like William Woodsworth. He was the poet laureate. 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 I don't know. Uh, a lot of people are awfully stupid, then. You should not speak ill of him like that. He was a great man and died only one year hence. It is rather too soon to insult him. You have not even given his body a chance to cool yet. Cold or not, I doubt he will care very much about what I think now. Being dead, it has a tendency to curtail one's ability to care of such things. Say what you will, but I still think it is a... Uh, Say what you will, but I still don't think it is appropriate. You don't think- you don't- you do not think anything is appropriate. Nelly, it's a wonder you let me kiss you as I do. Giggling mischievously, Emmeline sat herself up and pressed an unexpected kiss against Cornelia's neck. Ah! <laughs> Cornelia twitched her eyelashes fluttering. How, uh, are you a vampire, Emmy? Perhaps. I feel I get along far better with the Lord Brian versus than Mr. Woodsworth at any rate. If only Woodsworth had written of vampires, then you might pay attention. Indeed. It would be more interesting. Not as interesting as this, however. Uh, Emmy, you will leave boozes if you kiss me like that. 
And yet, despite Cornelia's feeble protestations, she found herself inclining her head, giving Emmeline further <laughs> access to the white landscape of skin that made up her neck, her collarbone, and parts of her chest that were not obscured by the light pink fabric of her dress. Emmeline giggled devilishly, pressing yet another kiss against Cornelia's neck, lowered down this time. You say that, but I know you don't truly mind. I mean, not mind, but my mother. Ah, yes, how could I forget the venerable Mrs. Linton? If, you, if your mother caught you with bruises on your fair nape, she might grow rather suspicious. Th th that is what I was thinking. Though Emmeline was no longer kissing Cornelia, Cornelia's voice escaped from her lips in a soft, in soft gas, lighter than usual. The syllables strung together with stutters. Her, her heart was pounding far too fast, dyeing her cheeks dark crimson. crimson. Inwardly, Cornelia scolded herself. She was just like those silly swooning girls, women, swooning girls, women in books penned by men. P Pamela, in particular, sprung to mind. Pamela, Pamela, that's by uh, one of the Bronte sisters, isn't it? Um, in particular, sprung to mind, who fell to pieces at the sight of their lords. Her mother had not raised her to be like this, setting, setting the fact that Emmeline was another girl aside, which was rather important fact. But one Cornelia did not care to examine. Cornelia knew her own conduct was nothing short of shameful. Damn, she could hardly breathe and her heart felt as though it had been beating inside her mouth and no matter how she tried, she could not gather her composure. <laughs> Emmeline had the most curious effect upon her, much like a drug. Cornelia was a little better than the helpless opium addict, hardly able to function without Emmeline's kisses and caresses. Yet, Cornelia would not have changed her relationship with Emmeline for the world. Your mother might even suspect you have been engaged in dalliances or dalliances with that awful Wedgwood boy. No, no, not Aubrey Wedgwood. The one and the same, unless you thought I was referring to his father. Uh, Emmeline, Miss, Mr. Wedgwood in his 50s, the, the idea is preposterous. It's not so very preposterous. We are nearing the age where our... We ourselves should get married, you know? It's not uncommon for girls our age to marry gentlemen in their twilight years. Ah, sorry. I I would rather not. Not to Aubrey Redwood, and certainly not his father. I would rather die. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I'm so glad to hear you say that. The feeling is quite mutual. I do not know why you had to ask to begin with. Should my feelings not be obvious? What do you mean? I, I mean, I, um, well... Cornelia, Cornelia looked down at her lap, linking her fingers together. Even though this may make me less of a woman, or at least not a woman my parents wish me to be, I cannot bring myself to care. You are the one that I love, Emmy. Your virulent, virulent, virulent hatred of Mr. Woodsworth aside, I do not want to think about getting married to a man. I don't even want to contemplate it. Ah... Emmeline blinked a few moments, momentarily surprised by Cornelia's sudden burst of honesty. This surprise soon wore away, however, to be replaced with a gentle smile. <laughs> I feel quite the same. I do not even care if I become an old spinster like poor Ellie. I just want to be with you, no matter what. Daw. So cool. It's the next day. What does he fucking close? God damn it! Jesus Christ. It's not like you're- like you couldn't even like- I would have preferred you would have taken this to Photoshop and changed the main color of the pink to like- if you would have changed the saturation, I'd have been totally okay with that. But no! <laughs> they have literally the same outfit the entire thing. Jesus Christ. Cornelia. What are you doing, Emmy? Drawing? Drawing? I thought you were supposed to be reading more of Mr. Woodsworth- Woodsworth's poetry. I attempted to do so, but it was so very dull, and that was when I had- and that's when I had this excellent idea. Yes? Cornelia's frown deepened. She folded her arms, though she did not want to question Emmeline. She did wonder, as always did- uh, Excuse me, sorry. As she always did when Emmeline claimed to have struck upon an excellent idea. Just how excellent- <laughs> Just how excellent this idea really was. The last time Emmeline had been besotted, bes bestowed, sorry, bestowed with an excellent idea, she had hidden a slug in the pocket of 
the long-suffering Miss Warren's overcoat, and the poor woman had shrieked loudly upon its discovery to rouse even William Wordsworth from his grave in Crosmer. Oh, you see, I simply remember what you told me earlier, my dear Nelly. And what was that? And what was that? You told me that to try and find something in Mr. Woodworth's poems that I found interesting. And did you? Of course not! I already told you, I cannot stand his works! There is one thing in this world, however, that I cherish above all else. And what is that? Why, it is beautiful women, of course. Cornelia blinked. Where was this going exactly? Though she had been close companions with Emmeline throughout her last working years, almost 15 years, she could not profess to to possess full understanding of the inner workings of the other girl's mind. Perhaps not even Emmeline herself understood such things, given she always seemed to flip from fancy to fancy, restless like a bumblebee in the spring. I am well aware that you like beautiful women, but I fail to see how that relates to the esteemed Mr. Woodworth. Why, Nellie, you are being awfully dense today. It is simple, self-explanatory, really. It is? Yes. I see now, in order to truly appreciate Mr. Woodworth's works, that's like a fucking tongue twister, I should reimagine him, the poet himself, into a form more suited to my desires. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my god. Yes, Emmeline, yes. That is, I should imagine his body of poetry came not from the hand of a pompous, self-obsessed old git with a big nose, but from a young and beautiful woman. Look, look. Emmeline, beautific in her excitement, showed Cornelia one of the quick sketches she had been working on. Cornelia took the, the sketch. Oh my god. Is that... I think it is. Cornelia took the sketch, the furrow of her brow deepening as she did so. There displayed on the white page was a young and beautiful woman. Her hair fell about her shoulders in a manner any young romantic would surely have appreciated. And she wore a loose dress that was rather... Why is it so short? Oh, Cornelia, it is it is just a fantasy. Do not trouble yourself too much with the details. And I made more sketches too. More? Of course! After I redesigned Mr. Woodworth, I realized that the current landscape of British poetry could use a touch more feminine charm. And I took it upon myself to beautify <laughs> all of the romantic poets that our country cares so greatly about greatly. Apart from Keats, of course, he did not live long enough to warrant a new design as far as I'm concerned. Of course. Cornelia flipped through Emmeline's array of worrying sketches, her left eye twitching. Emmeline, you really do have a one-track mind. Oh god. That's amazing. <laughs> Let's see, I can't push anything there. That's quit, that's low game. Anything new? There's a music box, there's that. Oh, I can push on this now. Um... Is that all I get? What? Alright, fair play. Alright, so that, ladies and gentlemen, went a lot longer than I thought it would. First of all, I did not know there was a sec- I don't know how I'm gonna cut this up. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the sad story of Emmeline Burns. If you want to play it yourself, like I said, it is on Steam for free. And, yeah, so, this is all for today. Um, so, thank you guys for watching, I really appreciate it. If you guys have any recommendations of another story with, um, a lady loving, a women loving other women story, um, feel free to let me know down below. Or maybe go on, uh, uh, the cur on the curator, curator list on Steam. I follow, like I said, a curator named Hella Yuri. Um, Hella as in, like, that's hella cool, H-E-L-L-A, and Yuri. Um, y U R I, and if there's any game on there that you find interesting um, and you would like to see me play, feel free to let me know. All right. So thank you guys again for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to be nice to each other. Don't forget to be ugh, don't forget to be compassionate. And I will see you guys in the next one. Well, I guess not the next one. I'll see you guys in the next whatever game I do. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Bye.